Bob, tell us about this absolutely gorgeous uh, Ford Fairlane, 1957 Ford Fairlane convertible. Well, Mark, this is a, uh, as you say, a 57 Fairlane 500 uh, convertible. It was the uh, top of the line in 57. Uh, they also had what they called a retractable hardtop in 57. Uh, some people confuse this, but this is a, is a convertible, which has a soft, which has a soft top. Um, they kept this body style for three years, 57, 8, and 9, with minor uh, changes. Uh, the uh, taillights, et cetera, changed, but basically the cars were of the same uh, core for those three years. The, we chatted earlier, Bob, but you commented about the uh, two-tone paint and the fact that they could come as a two-tone color as well as a, a single color as well. Yeah, they even had a few with three-tone. And uh, in Canada, when they made the Meteor version of this, some of the Meteors had three-tone paint on them. But uh, that's not what we've got here. Could you point out to our viewers a little bit about this item? Because I think this is a, an added piece onto the wheel well, isn't it? Yeah, it's a known as a, a fender skirt and uh, they were available uh, from Ford and the aftermarket uh, produced them for years. There are a couple of different styles. This is the one that fits inside the cut in the fender and you could get a cruiser skirt which fits right back to the bumper and overlays this part of the car. Uh, if we go back to the uh, lights, uh, we were actually chatting earlier about the lights too that you mentioned that through the, those three years of this particular Fairlane model that there were different designs of lights and we've actually seen this light before on a different car. Yeah, this is the identical tail light piece of the 57 Thunderbird. Uh, they're, they're the same part number. And then you mentioned that in 58 they changed the tail lights completely. They changed completely. from round to a, an oval tail light in 58 and then in 59 went back to a, a circular tail light. So Bob, we're now in the interior of this uh, beautiful Fairlane and I'm sitting here I'm a tall fella, but there's a ton of room in this car, headroom as well as legroom. Yeah, they were big, weren't they? They really were big, and you had mentioned uh, in order to get the top down that you have to start the car up. Well, it will. it's an electric pump, but it's, uh, it's better with the engine running. Well, let's see how this top operates. Now, there's a couple of safety latches that we've just removed from the headrail that mm -hmm. we've each done, and mm -hmm. now from there you're just going to be pulling a switch. And a little accelerator helps to accelerate the motor a little yeah, bit, does it? it does help. It's just like a modern convertible. It is. Because these days with the convertibles, uh, you just press a button and they fold down inside. You said that the mechanism for this convertible top is really quite significant to rebuild. Yeah, there, there are a lot of parts to it. Not nearly the, the number of parts that you have in a retractable. Apparently they have just hundreds of, of parts that have to move in, in sequence to, uh, to get the hardtop convertible back there. But uh, Tell us about some of the instrumentation too that we have in this, an AM radio or, or an AM FM radio? Yeah, it was what Ford called their town and country radio that had a, a different uh, uh, build for signal seeking in town or where the signal is weaker in the country. Uh, it was probably one of the first of the Signal Seek radios. It actually has a motor inside it which drives the, the uh, condenser, the variable condenser that tunes in the station. So it's actually a motor. And is that your speaker? And that is the radio Your, speaker. your single speaker, so it's definitely mono radio. It's definitely mono. And then as far as your clock goes, we have a, an analog clock. That's true. Uh, yeah. There as well. Uh, you had mentioned about the extra gauges, and maybe you could tell our viewers why you would put those extra gauges in a car like this. Well, uh, in the late 50s, or mid to late 50s, they went away from gauges and put in what we used to call idiot lights, an oil pressure light and a generator light on the dash, which just told you when you were things have failed and you better call a tow truck, whereas if you have some gauges, you can monitor what's going on. Most people put them in. That's pretty critical for, for the vehicle of this vintage to be monitoring all of your aspects of the car. This is an automatic transmission? Automatic. Three speed? It is a three speed, uh, yes. Great. A Ford Fordomatic. That's what they call them, Fordomatic? A Fordomatic. I'd love us to uh, perhaps uh, go outside and have a look at the engine. You could talk a little bit about this uh, Y Block V8. Well, Mark, in order to see the engine here, we have to hood up. And you can see that they, uh, they are spring-loaded. You have heavy-duty springs here at the front. Tell us about this Y-block, Bob. 
Well, this was uh, Ford's first attempt at an overhead valve V8. Of course, Ford had the V8 engine since 1932 with a little flathead. In 54, they brought out their uh, so-called Y-block overhead valve V8. And uh, this is the uh, 312 cubic inch, 245 horsepower version of it, which was the largest version they made of the Y-block engine. Uh, it uh, was superseded in 1958 by the uh, the next FE series of Ford engines, I believe. Uh, I noticed that the valve covers that you have on this, it does say Thunderbird Special. So, I mean, I, I've just picked up as well as the, for the Ford, it also has the same engine in the Thunderbird. Would that be correct? Exactly. And uh, many people thought they had something special with a Thunderbird engine in their a daily driver Ford, but in fact, the engines were the same. Right from the 55 uh, Thunderbird, which was the first year of the Thunderbird, it had uh, the Y block engine in it. Bob, this is a stunning car, and uh, we really appreciate you showing the Fairlane off to us with the top down.